Hello, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today we're looking at a, another submission of Jan of our horse, Geo. This time he's working in sham bones. We try to get him to stretch a little more deeply and a little more consistently. Um, the big thing I want to say here, the sham bone looks pretty good. looks like it's probably adjusted about the right. It would be good in the beginning if you could show me a close-up, because it's hard for me to see where the lines are at this distance. I can't really see them at all, but it looks like it's having the right effect. Um, the big thing I want to point out also is it looks to me like you have the line over the top of his head and to the bit on the outside. That's fine if you have a horse that you know you can't control and you are in a big field and perhaps that's a you know he's trying to drag you back to the barn or something. But as soon as you can, you want to just lunge off of the inside ring. The horse will stretch much better and be more consistent. You know we do the over the top of the head thing when we need control. That is, we keep the horse from dragging us out of a big field. You know, which is sort of the problem of training horses in big fields. But I grew up doing it and have done it many times. And when I lived in Unionville, Pennsylvania, the family I worked for didn't even believe in having rings. They had to do all everything. There's starting of race horses and everything else out in just grass fields. So it certainly can be done. Just be aware of the footing. You know that you're not someplace that has holes or rocks or things like that. But you should be fine from what I see here. Um, so once again, that line going over the top of his head it can tighten against the horse's mouth, and sometimes it will go in underneath the bridle. I mean, it looks to me like, once again, I can't really see because you're so far from me, but it, it kind of looks to me like the line is going over the head. And then I said, in which case, you've got to be really careful that it doesn't stick in under the bridle because it doesn't release enough. Because remember, we have to always be able to release to the weight of the rein. So if you have any constant pressure on the mouth, even if it's being caused by you know, a lunge line going over the top of the head that's gotten caught under the bridle and not releasing. So be sure of that. And as soon as you can, and it looks like he's pretty good about this. doesn't look like he's doing anything too bad. You should be able to just lunge off the inside rein, ring rather, of the bit. And that will help you a great deal. Now, obviously, if horse were being very fractious, you could easily pull the bit through the horse's mouth and that sort of thing. You can also lunge with a cavison. You know, I find it fine just to do it off the inside rein. And I was, was actually taught to do it that way um, by the former head of the Spanish riding school. So if anybody says, oh, it's not classical and you have to lunge in a cavison, I was taught to do it this way by Franz Rohovansky, who was once the head riding school, uh, was the head rider at the Spanish riding school. So, you know, there's lots of ways we can approach rum. And the main thing is that we're just not brutalizing the horse's mouth. That's the important thing. And, you know, if you're if whatever you're doing is causing pain to the horse, you're, you're really not doing dressage in the ultimate because the horse will never really relax. So check that out. The other thing I want to say is you want to lunge in one direction until you really get him there and that's the biggest glaring mistake that I see on this tape is you stop too soon. He's just sort of starting to get there a little bit but he's that he isn't really um, all the way there and staying there and so you stop him and you reward him. So remember every time you stop that leaves a huge impression on the horse that means you're doing the right thing. So that's the biggest thing I see here is that you need to just go on a little longer. He's stretching down really nicely there. And once again, as you said, if he will stretch and stay there in the stretch in the side reins, that's perfectly fine if he will. Um, but every time I've seen this horse go, he's kind of up and down and up and down with the neck. It seems to be a you know kind of ongoing thing with him. Um, so the sham bone is usually more helpful for those kind of horses. But the biggest thing that's going to help you is to keep doing what you're doing long enough to really get him there. So towards the end of this, you know, he starts to stretch a little bit. Um, but he doesn't really get consistent. He's still popping up and down. So once you get the stretch, keep it there a little while longer and be sure when you bring the horse to a halt or stop to change direction that he's gotten all the way there. Now, if you want to start in a different direction each day, some people are concerned about that. Well, they always do longer in one day. We'll start the other way one day. That's fine. But you want to keep going until you really get him all the way in the zone in each direction before you change. Because remember, every time you stop, you're rewarding him. So if he's still going up and down and up and down, you basically, like you're doing here, are rewarding him for never getting there. Now, the other thing is you want to do is ask the horse to stop. Don't draw the horse to you the way you're doing. You want a horse to stand still and certainly don't do automatic releases where the horse flips around the end of the line. That's pretty much one of the worst things you can do. Just ask the horse to halt and then reel up your line and go to him to change directions rather than drag him to you by the rein. Uh, it's a safer way to go. And we want the horse to stand still when we say halt, you know, so he doesn't then drag to us and move around. Much better procedure. I see a lot of people who've done this sort of Western stuff where they flip them around. And that's great for somebody who really knows what they're doing and can get away with it. But beginners go home and try this and, you know, and then the horse ends up, I get so many of them and be started that way that they can no longer lunge because they just flip back and forth. Okay, see you next time, Jen. Good work. Just keep going longer.